Sherman Leader by DVG covers the exploits of an American combat group that is under your control during World War II. Starting with the campaigns in North Africa from 1942 to the final days of the war in Germany in 1945. Sherman Leader is part of the Leader series by DVG, a system that covers different campaigns based around tanks like the Sherman, aircraft, submarines, and more. The components of the game consist of the following. The game begins by selecting a campaign, acquiring the units needed to make up your team, and resolving attacks against enemy forces. Each campaign has a set of victory conditions, and the emphasis is on planning and execution that minimizes losses while achieving your objectives. In this four-part series, we will break down the game by explaining the basic rules. It's helpful to have the rules handy during the video for reference, but you'll get a basic idea of how the game plays. The campaign is broken down by weeks, at the start of each week, you will allocate the forces under your command to assault the enemy. It is on the tactical battlefield where your commanders will gain experience, but they will also suffer from stress which weakens them until they are rested. This means that the forces you choose to engage must change from week to week, otherwise you risk putting too much stress on your commanders which may result in falling short of your objectives. You are now ready to set up your first campaign. You start by placing the tactical display sheet and headquarters sheet on the table. Next, separate all cards by their types. Shuffle the special conditions and event decks and place them on the tactical display. Separate the three types of battalion cards to create three decks. The remaining campaign, objective, unit, and commander cards are what you will use to create your forces for the campaign. Put all damage counters into an opaque cup. If you own any expansion counters, keep them in the box for your first game as they will not be needed. Get your player log sheet ready. Choose a campaign card and place it on your headquarters sheet. The introductory campaign is recommended for your first game. The campaign card will list the year, difficulty level, and special option points to be gained from the objective card. You will also know the terrain type to use on the tactical display, any special notes that will modify the campaign itself, the starting skill levels of your commander, and the aggressive level of enemy units that will be faced. The headquarters sheet will tell you what type of enemy counters to place into an opaque cup. Now you select the objective card and place it on the headquarters sheet. Remember to note the objective card on your player's log. The objective card will provide you with the name of the objective, starting SO points which are modified by the SO points on the campaign card, number of weeks, weekly SO points, battalion value, and any special notes. There is also a victory point chart that helps you keep track of the points earned in the campaign. Now you draw battalion cards to represent enemy forces. Each card will have information on the number, quality, and designation of each enemy unit. Battalions have point values that are used for drawing battalion cards for the campaign and victory points when destroyed. In addition, each battalion will have a range band in the operational map where it starts. Special conditions and special notes are found here as well. To determine where enemy battalions are placed, draw one card from each of the assault, Assault Supply and Command in that order and repeat if necessary. Fixed battalions do not move and can be identified by the building graphic. Stop drawing battalion cards when they reach the objective card's battalion point value. Then find the counter that matches the card and place them on the tactical display. You can only buy units that were available during the year of the campaign. Remember to follow any special notes that might limit the number you can purchase. Plus, save a few SO points for the trucks and scouts needed to help you succeed. Each unit that you purchase will be matched by a corresponding counter. Plus, there will be special notes that relate to how the vehicle can attack, move, speed, range, and more. You automatically get one commander that matches each type of unit that was purchased. The campaign card will tell you how many commanders you will receive for each skill level. You work your way from the bottom, which is recruit, up to the top, which is ace. It's possible to select more commanders than listed. Their skill level will be noted with an asterisk. 
Commanders are not permanently assigned to specific units. They command any unit of that particular type. You cannot choose more than one commander with the same name. The breakdown of the commander's card will tell you the unit specialty, experience points, cool, stress, status, speed, attack rating, and any special notes. After selecting a commander, you can promote them using SO points to a higher skill level. Trucks cost two SO points. Their presence with enemy battalions in a designated area will subtract two from the SO cost to attack the battalion. Scouts cost a single SO point. Each one that is assigned to an enemy battalion adds one battle turn to the battle. Both trucks and scouts may be purchased once each week. You can assign several to one battalion, and you can buy them during the repair or replace step. Remember to record on the player's log all SO points spent on promotions, trucks, and scouts. Place all enemy units on the tactical display. They will be used during the combat steps. In the next video, we will go over the start of the week, pre-combat, and combat. Mm -hmm.